33 pounds. We've seen Escandone dangerous okay. early in recent fights. He blitzed Jack Tapora and got him out of there in the first round recently. And he had Carlos Castro in a little bit of trouble in the first round of their fight, too. And we'll see if Oscar Escandone can be dangerous once more here in the opening round. He got blown out in his last fight, but that's that's against a guy who has 26 fights and 20, 26 wins, 26 knockouts. But then again, Malik is a, is a tough guy. Nice left hook there punch. from Escandone. Looked like Montgomery was teeing off on Escandone along the ropes, but those are the situations where Escandone can still be dangerous. Malik looks so much bigger than him. Right, and I think it's Malik's style that's making this an awkward fight right now because Malik doesn't want to fight like a tall guy. Yeah. He wants to go in there. Now, he could just jab, jab, one to him to death, you know, overhand right maybe, but he wants to be in the mix, and he's like, this guy is short. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think he, it's going to just take him a couple minutes to, to get the right distance, right. and he's doing that right now. So I think before this round is up, Malik is going to be in the right spot to land those big shots. You see how he's throwing that right hand, like chopping downward, you know, it's just... It's awkward for him probably to fight somebody this short. Absolutely. And, you know, Escandone is not busy enough to even make Malik think twice. So that's why he's so comfortable being in the pocket right there, landing that big, big left hook to the body. Right. And I think he should come up with a left uppercut. Wow. Big, big There's left hook. A... That's the shot that Escandone is obviously looking for. If he can lead his way through this barrage of punches and land a big left hook. That's the miracle shot that he's hoping to land. Yeah, but he's just staying on the ropes. He's literally just, you know, allowing Malik to just target practice, you know? I'll tell you what, the, I don't know why he doesn't move away. <laughs> I'm not worried about off these ropes. It's Gondon hurting Malik Montgomery after the shots. I saw him get, saw him get hit against Juarez the last time out. I don't see this guy hurting Malik. Remember, guys, these are... 40-plus-year-old legs with no time to train. <laughs> and this might just be what Escandone has in the tank right now. Just trying to counter with something big off the ropes as Montgomery just keeps the shots coming. Oh, tell him to get the bag ready. <laughs> get the bag ready. <laughs> I mean, he's literally... Escandone is squared up. That means his feet are parallel. He's only trying he's to just waiting on the ropes. Like he's trying he's to land that lucky left hook. Yeah, he's like, I'm not gonna expend no energy but, but punches from a squared position. So you don't really have any balance for any power. Malik might not get the first round bonus, but I see him getting the bonus at some point in this one. That was the best shot that Escandone right there. That was after the battle. Capacity crowd here in the OTE arena. Looks like a middleweight fighting a, a bantamweight out there. <laughs> I mean, this whole round was fought just like this on the ropes. And basically, Malik did whatever he wanted. Didn't catch him with everything, but caught him with a lot of significant shots, like that shot to the body. Tried to pull the lead hand down a little bit, chopping right. But you're right, Baraki. It took oh, him a minute. Nice, nice left hook by Escondone. Off the, off the ropes, but like I said, his footing was parallel, so he didn't have any, any power behind that. We're gonna stop playing with him and stop being open. Malik's father and trainer still has something to complain about. Right? <laughs> and Michael Montgomery, the father of Malik, never satisfied, never fully satisfied. Malik's with what he sees out of his son, and his son Malik right on top of Oscar Escandone here in round two. And Escandone went right back to his position on the ropes. Pretty sure Malik's dad, father said, hey, this guy doesn't belong in the ring with you right now. Let's get him out of here. And that's a fact. This is a 40L Escondone that didn't have enough time to train. And it's not in shape at all. He would have been more competitive than this. Montgomery, a super high output guy, just given a green light to let his hands go. He doesn't need an invitation, but when he can really line Escandone up, 
And this is dangerous territory for Escandon, but he really has nowhere else to go. You know, even if Malik is not hurting Escandon, if he just sits there on the ropes all night with this type of punishment, I don't see the ref letting this go too much longer. No, and, and referee Ansel Stewart, a, a terrific referee who has a history of looking at fights like this, realizing when they're just not competitive, and stopping them in an ethical manner. So we'll see what Stewart will do here in this one that is just full-on one-way traffic. Yeah. Punching bag right now. This is target practice for Malik. See, that's got down looking at the canvas right now when he takes it in. Yeah, he seems to be holding his eye. Those headshots really hurt him. Yeah, the blood, blood is dripping down. On the mound, and this one is over. Absolute mayhem from Malik Montgomery. That nose is broken. shattered. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the OTX ring, referee Ansel Stewart counts out the blue corner with an official time of 1 minute 39 seconds of round number two. Your winner, by way of knockout and still undefeated, from Macon, Georgia, Malik May.